Hey everybody, my name is Jay Lofsky. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're digging a little bit deeper into importing photos in Lightroom. So let's get into the video. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about importing photos in the Lightroom and I showed you how to do it real quick and easy without any options, any fancy stuff going on. But in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about importing your photos and go over some of the options that you have as you import your photos. Let's jump over to Lightroom and check it out and I'll show you how to get going here. All right, so here we are back in Lightroom again and I'm in the catalog that I've created and I want to go to the import dialog box window again. So here's the import dialog box window. Again, we've gone over this uh, one of the other videos. I'll put a link up over here somewhere if you need to check that out. I'm going to select my directory where I want to import some images from. And again, I'm going to do copy as DNG as we talked about before. So what I want to do here is just run down this left hand menu a little bit and just talk about some of the things that are in there. So under file handling here, we talked about building previews and we said use embedded plus sidecar and that's going to give you the fastest loading file right off the bat. Now what I do is I always select one to one. And the reason I select one to one is because I want a full preview so that when I zoom in on the photo, I want that photo to generate a one to one preview and, and just zoom right in and I don't want to have to wait for it to generate the uh, one to one preview so I can just get working on my file. What does that mean? That means that when you import your photos, if you select that one to one option, it's going to take a little bit longer for Lightroom to build those previews and you might have to wait a little longer to do use your photos. For me, it doesn't matter. I usually import my photos and walk away and go do something else for a little while anyway. So I usually select one-to-one. -one. Build smart previews. What does that mean? Smart previews are previews that get used if you sync your files with Lightroom Mobile. You can build them right off the bat, but again, that's gonna take longer when you import your photos for Lightroom to process all those things in the background. So I don't worry about that. I do check, don't import suspected duplicates because I don't want any duplicates. Now I don't make a second copy anywhere. You can do that if you want. Um, I don't add it to a collection right off the bat, although you could do that if you'd like. File renaming. For me, I do rename my files and you can select a template here. So to do that, you would just select rename files and you click this little drop down. And now there's already some that come with Lightroom, but if you wanted to create your own, uh, for me, I have different cameras. So I use different file names for cameras. Come down here select edit and in here it gives you a lot of different options of how you can come up with a template of how to name your files you know you can just select through these different uh menus here and all you have to do is you know if you want to insert the number suffix boom and what that means is the number that's on the original file for numbering your photos if you want to number them in a, a import sequence some kind of sequence you can just go through these different options and click insert and that puts it into the template where it automatically fill those things in for you if you want custom uh, fields you can come down here and say insert custom text and it will ask you what you want to put in for that text when you select this template as an import option. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, leave a comment below and we can go over that a little bit more. Once you select how you want your file name to look, come up to the preset here and you want to come down to the bottom of the menu. It says save current settings as new preset. You would select that. It would save your settings as a new preset and you would have the option to select it here. So for me, a few that I made are right here it has the 5D Mark IV and the 60D just so I can keep my files all organized and separated. Extensions, I don't worry about that. And then down here, it shows you a little sample of what that can look like. The next category here, apply during import. You can apply develop settings, which are any of the settings in the, that are available to us in the develop module. Um, but this can be a real time saver and help you process your images if there's a certain settings that you usually apply to all of your images. For example, lens corrections, maybe you apply it to every single image. So you might want to do that on import so you don't have to worry about it later. So there's all kinds of things here and you can even come up with your own presets and select those as you import them. So the next category here is metadata. Now metadata, what's metadata? Metadata is the information in your photo, such as when it was taken, what kind of lens, uh, what camera, what date, GPS information if it has it. So you can use different presets for that if you'd like. Um, it also includes things such as who took the photo. You can put your copyright information in there. So I have one that I created, I just called it import preset. If you want to create a new one, you just select new. It'll bring up the new metadata preset window. You give it a name, we'll call this test. And you just go through this list of different information here and you select whatever you'd like to fill in. What I usually fill in is I'll come down to the copyright section here. 
I'll put in copyright. You'll I'll put in my name. I'll put copyrighted. Um, you know, you can put in a link to your, your website, your creator information here. I generally don't include my address in there, but I'll put my email, my website, uh, you know, my state and country. And that's pretty much the only things that I use out of this metadata preset. But there's tons of other things in here that you can use if you would like to. So once you have all your information in there, you would just click create and then you can select it here from the metadata uh, preset list. So import preset is like what I said, what I use. The next is keywords. So keywords are words that are searchable in your photos and it gets kind of attached to your photo so you can search your catalog. Once you have tons and tons of photos, maybe you want a photo uh, of the beach. So any pictures you took at the beach, you could keyword them with the word beach and then you can search that later on. So these couple photos that I'm gonna bring in here, I'm gonna call them landscape shots. So I'm gonna just gonna say landscapes. If I spell it right here. Okay, and then I hit enter and then it's gonna apply that keyword to all those images I import. The next is destination. And again, like we talked about before, this is where your files are going to be put. So where do I wanna put my photos? So I'm gonna go under my photos go here directory. And if you wanna know how to organize and import your photos, or at least the system that I use, I'll put a little card up here so you can go check out that video that we made. But in this case, I'm gonna go under photos go here and you can see my general categories that I've created. Now these are landscape photos here. And what I'm gonna do is select landscapes all, and that's where I want them to go. Now I can also create a subfolder. So in my case, the couple photos that I took were in my backyard. So I'm gonna say uh, under the landscapes all folder, I'm gonna say 2019 underscore uh, backyard. 2019 underscore backyard. Okay, and you can see it'll automatically pop up this file down here. After we've picked out all these settings and uh, we decide where we wanna put everything and how we wanna set everything up, you can actually save all of that as a single preset. To do that, you would come down here where it says import preset. Right now it says none because I have none selected. Now I wouldn't recommend that you import it into a specific subfolder and save that as a preset. I would just leave it as your top folder photos go here so that you can save that in your preset and then select whatever next folder down that you wanna go in after you already have your, your preset applied. So I would come up here, I'd select photos, go here, I'd uncheck this. All the other settings I have, I wanna keep the same. To save that as a preset, I come down here and I wanna save current settings as a new preset. So I'm gonna call this YouTube sample catalog import preset. Sounds good to me, create. So now if I went around and I changed some stuff and I went over here and applied some different things or whatever, if I come back here and then I go, oh, I wanna, put my, all my settings back. I click that, boom. And it brings me right to my top level folder. And then this allows me to then just turn on my Im import into subfolder, create your subfolder and then boom. But at least it gets you right to the directory where you wanna be. So once you do all that, all you have to do is click import. It'll bring your files in it, apply all those changes that you made and you are set to go. So I hope that helped you understand just a little bit more detail about the options that are available when you're importing your photos. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to make another video just going more in depth into any one of those things. They can definitely be a little confusing and take some time to understand and learn. So if you're into photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even a little bit of video and video editing, consider subscribing to my channel and click that little notification bell so you get notified when I put out new videos. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.